Hi. Dreams. Um, when I grew up, I had a lot of time to dream uh, because I lived in a small town in the mountains in Transylvania and my imagination was my best friend. And I used to dream of making flying machines uh, that could have lights, that would light when I would sing to them, and would be controlled by pumps with water, with very intricate mechanisms. And these machines could create other baby machines that could take any shape and reuse any objects. And in my dreams, I was also imagining how my parents will react if they see my machines and how the people in my community, my friends, their parents, would interact with what I made. Now, I'm going to tell you a secret. That wasn't only a dream. I transformed this dream into reality. And together with a lot of people around the world, we created Hackademia. That's where these images come from. Um, Hackademia is a global organization uh, where we design hands-on workshops so children can learn by playing and by doing, by inventing, by creating. And they do everything like you saw in the pictures. They create their own toys by recycling trash. They create rockets, microscopes from old webcams. Everything they dream of, they transform into reality. And they try to solve problems for their local communities, for their parents, grandparents. Now, a big thing about dreams is that we are all entitled to dream. Everyone's dream is valid. So that's why uh, almost a year ago, we started working on this project called AfriMakers. Because we were contacted by many, many institutions and schools in Africa inviting us to go and do workshops with children there. We decided to do a crowdfunding campaign. So there were 200 people from 17 countries that supported this community project. And the main idea of AfriMakers was to train local teams of mentors in 10 countries all around Africa. We started in Egypt, then we went to Kenya, Tanzania, Botswana, Rwanda, Ghana, Nigeria, all around the continent. And the idea for these mentors was that they would have the training, the coaching, the tools, and the environment where they could start prototyping solutions for their community, for their town, and then be able to teach children and parents and teachers how to help them. So we gave all of these teams a maker box, an invention lab, so they can start prototyping. The box would have sensors, gas sensors, Arduino boards, hardware, soldering irons. And they start learning just like the kids would learn. And then they, they start prototyping all sorts of projects. Uh, now I have to tell you that just like in space, we had to work uh, in very harsh conditions. I think anyone who wants to invent something for Mars should also try to work without electricity for five days. Um, and uh, we, we also encountered a lot of restrictions in terms of access. We went to all the local electronics market, markets trying to find components for our projects. And it, it, it was difficult, it was challenging. But this brought us, all the mentors, together. We became a family uh, with common goals of learning from each other and dreaming about a better tomorrow. Um, some of the projects the mentor did were like an air quality monitoring station. This was in Egypt where air pollution is one of the biggest problems. They made a pulse monitor for health. So children wanted their grandma, uh, grandparents to measure their heartbeats so they know when they get too anxious. Um, all sorts of like, this is a, a remote controllable microscope. And the best thing about this is that it's built from an old webcam, so it basically costs nothing. Um, and what was very interesting is when the mentors, the men mentors in the beginning were like, but why kids? Like, why should we? This is very complicated. It took us so long to learn and make, and you want us to go and teach this to 10 years old, six years old? And I told them, try it, and then you will understand. So they went to schools for the first time, and they thought, oh, it's going to be hard. They are not going to understand. And actually, 
they were amazed because these children, these future astronauts, this future Einstein coming from Africa, actually learned much faster than they did. And they came up with ideas and inventions that they never thought of. So I think for everyone it was a big lesson not to project the limits that were projected on us in our educational system on the children and actually give them a voice, give them the freedom of experimenting, creating and sharing back with us their ideas. So we went to many schools. The mentors start training more mentors. This was in Ghana Technology Institute. We were supposed to have 50 students to be trained how to prototype with hardware and measure data from various sensors. We had 300 students. Um, yeah, we, they made a maker fair. They went to museums. Um, they went to like cultural centers. It was just amazing to see how all the community would come together and instead of passing cons passive consumers, they would become active creators, makers. They would learn and realize that they can solve their own problems. And I wanted to tell you um, why we called it AfriMakers, because we wanted people in Africa to take this project, we wanted this project to become a community project all across the continent. And that's why we actually gave fellowships. So the mentors from Egypt traveled and trained the people in Kenya, and the people from Kenya traveled and, uh, to, to Tanzania and trained the people there. And I think there's a lot that we can learn from Africa. And this is, this is actually one of the most important messages today. We're not going there to help. We're going there to learn from each other. This is what people in Africa still do with their hands today. This is a, a boat made from a single tree by fishermen in Ghana. Uh, they're doing fridges by hand. This is a cooling chamber done by Serhi Dion, who's a self-thought engineer. And he's not only doing fridges, but sh he's also brewing his own welding gas. He could make rockets. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, I think what's interesting as well in Africa is that this maker culture has always existed there. And they still preserve these communities. This, this is a welding cooperative. This is where people go and weld and learn from each other. And I, I met a, a, a craftsman here who does machines for factories and earns very well his life and asked him, why do you still want to work here? And he told me I would never leave this community. When I get too many uh, projects, I share them with my colleagues. When I have a problem, I go and ask my friends. I think this is something we need to bring back to Europe and to developed societies. And um, yeah, I wanted to share a story. Um, and I wanted to share a story of two schools because one of the main things we're training mentors to do is to run these workshops in public schools, in underprivileged communities, in slums, in favelas where no one goes, but also in private schools that could pay them so they can actually earn their living by doing this. So this is in Nairobi, in Kenya, and in the morning we went to the School of Nation, very rich private school. Every child had a computer, very luxurious school, just like a private school here. And then in the afternoon, we went here. This is Madare, is one of the largest slums in Nairobi. It's two million people living here. We could only go there, it's quite dangerous. So we could only go there because we were invited by the community leader. So we actually had to walk uh, among like mountains of trash and like very, very difficult conditions for half an hour to get to the school. I want to say that the mentors we were training in Nairobi never been to this place before, neither. And then we arrived to the school. This is the school in Madare. There are no benches, there's no blackboard, and there were about 300 children. Now, I don't know if you ever tried to teach science and technology and dream about space and inventing the future in these conditions. Um, it's not easy, but it's not impossible. And we were um, very touched by the, the conditions and by the environment. And we didn't dare to take out our computers and the boards and the tools. So initially, we just start 
um, singing with the children. So the mentors visiting from Egypt start singing and then the children taught them their songs and dances. And then we heard a plane. And then we heard the plane was like very loud and we asked them, oh, what's that? That's a plane. Do you know how the planes fly? And they were like, no, no, no. We're like, okay, how, how do we do a workshop now on the spot to teach them how planes fly? What do we have? So we realized they have notebooks and we took two pieces of paper and made one into a ball and then let them fall. And we asked them, why do you think the papers are the same size you saw? Why do you think one paper has gone to the floor much faster than the other one? So initially they said, no, 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 there's one paper is bigger. I'm sure it's bigger. Oh, and then they were like, no, I'm sure it's heavier. I'm sure. Then we opened the piece of paper and then we, t we showed them they are exactly the same. Why do you think one went faster and then the other one? Um, we had a two hours conversation and circle with these children, trying to understand how the planes fly, how the birds fly, how we can go to space, just by starting with paper. And I think that's very important because I don't think it's always only about technology. Um, I think it's a lot about people. And um, I think it, for, for us, one of the main things we learned is that if we really want people to understand how things work, if we really want children to understand how things work and imagine how we could do things better in the future, we have to use our hands. And we have to actually question most of the things that we are using. Is this the best possible way to solve this problem? Can we go back to the basics? Can we combine the old, the old know-how of the crafts of doing with the new, the technology and exploration? How can we combine this? And how can we empower the young generation to understand the future and to contribute to it? Not only here, everywhere, all around the world. So I think my main message for you today, I mean, like the main thing I would like main thing I would like you to take away is exactly what we heard earlier. Uh, imagination is the only limit to the things that we can do. And I think one of the main things we, we learn from children and from doing this project is that if you can imagine something, you can do it. If you had a childhood dream, just like me, you can do it. So don't, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Start today, uh, dedicate every single second of your life for achieving your dreams. Don't forget to use your hands and imagine a better f tomorrow and help us build it together with kids. Thank you.